While we're waiting for the parts to turn up for the Electronico D3 calculator repair, I thought we'd take a look at this Sharp MZ80A personal computer. I bought this uh, off eBay a few weeks ago, a bit disappointed when it turned up. Very badly packaged. These are fairly easy to ship, they're not very heavy, uh, but unfortunately this was extremely badly packaged. It had one layer of bubble wrap around it. It was put into a box standing on this front edge of the keyboard which is obviously not very strong, it's old plastic, it's fairly brittle and um, needless to say it got damaged in transit, the case is broken and I did contact the seller and the uh, usual uh, response that uh, well it must be the couriers. The outer box was completely undamaged, it was just badly packaged uh, but I thought I'd go ahead and uh, try and get this working anyway it's just a bit of a shame that another old piece of equipment's been damaged through carelessness. But um, I haven't tried powering this up yet. Get it uh, switched on, see what it does. I know that the seller had already powered it up, so um, I don't have any concerns powering it up. It's not a good idea if you find one of these in your loft. If you don't intend to uh, restore it and at least check the power supply, it's best not to switch it on. But as this has been switched on already, we'll give it a go. I have checked, it is a 240 volt uh, version, so we should be able to power this up quite safely. Before we do that, we'll have a quick look around it. You can see that this is the colour the plastic should be, and you can see it's uh, quite badly yellowed. Now, obviously there is a treatment for this, uh, but um, I quite often don't bother doing it. It's if somebody wants to um, revitalise the plastic, then they can do that if they wish to. Um, the equipment I keep, I tend not to do it. It's yellow, that's how it looks, and uh, I tend to retain the age that they have when I get them. Uh, so, not a great deal on this. Um, it's a fairly simple machine. So, on the back we have an expansion slot, which in this case is blanked off. Uh, we've got the brightness, uh, volume, and then a reset button on the back. Mains in, on off switch, and that's it. There's nothing else on here. It's got a built-in tape drive. You can see that um, one side of this is broken, so that will need repairing. So we'll get this uh, switched on, see what it actually does, if anything. So we'll switch it on. Okay, it clicked, and it is drawing power. So we'll give it a few minutes to warm up and see what it does. I'll try turning the uh, brightness up. Okay. So it is actually running. I wasn't expecting this to come on at all, to be honest. I thought it was uh, faulty. Okay, well it seems to be working. I'm not quite sure what the fault is. So what I'll do is uh, have a quick uh, play with this, see if I can figure out what the faults are, and uh, we'll go from there. I've been trying to find um, what's wrong with this and um, the only thing I can find are the, the breakages we've already seen. The um, plastic uh, door on the cassette drive is broken and the case is broken in a couple of spots. So I've currently got a uh, carefully calibrated reel of solder sitting on the tape uh, door to keep it closed. This did come with a box of tapes. I don't know uh, what condition these are in or if they're actually viable tapes. I've been trying to load them and it's going through the motions of trying to load and um, sometimes it just uh, freezes and other times it comes up with um, uh, checksum errors. Now this one seems to have loaded so uh, it looks like this is actually fundamentally working. It needs a few repairs but um, I'm going to take the cover off, we'll have a look inside and uh, try and figure out what's going on. So I've got the case opened up as you can see, very simple arrangement inside this. We've got the keyboard, the main board sits at the base, the monitor sits on top on a plastic uh, bracket. I've taken the front cover off this, it will need uh, the tube cleaning and um, the cassette drive is now accessible. Just move the camera so you can see that. So cassette drive, nice and accessible, easy to, to take out, just a few screws and um, we'll need to get that out and get the, uh, the door uh, sorted out and um, 
it looks quite reasonable in here so it's just the pit of the case is broken it would be quite a nice uh, machine to restore can't really see anything wrong with it a uh, few of the ICs have kind of walked themselves halfway out of their sockets okay so um, other than being a bit dusty it's very uh, nice condition it's just a pity that the case is broken otherwise this would be a candidate for a, a very thorough uh, restoration um, these are not worth a huge amount of money but they are quite nice machines uh, I'm going to take the cassette drive out try and get that sorted out notice um, down on the memory chips um, there's quite a lot of oxidation on the pins and these uh, this quite often makes machines like this unreliable or the memory stops working reliably and they have a tendency to keep crashing unexpectedly um, so I'll take all those out, clean the pins and uh, probably take the uh, main board out completely uh, in fact I'll take the, all the innards out it's very easy to get the uh, internal workings out of these there's only a few screws that hold it together give everything a good clean um, and then I can look at the cassette drive and see if we can get it sorted out try and come up with some sort of patch for the case and uh, then we'll start testing it and see if we can detect any faults I've noticed that um, using a the thermal camera um, some of the capacitors on the power supply are getting quite warm and it's only been on a few minutes so I think they're uh, in need of replacing other than that so far I haven't really seen any issues but um, uh, if anything comes to light I will of course point it out but the plan at the moment is just to get all these parts out and uh, see if we can find any faults okay so 10 minutes later I've got the unit completely dismantled and it has answered the question as to what was wrong with this so we'll come to that in a few minutes you may be able to see it already so um, we've got the cassette door off the door itself is fine um, what's actually broken off is there's a little let's turn this around you can see the uh, break in the case here um, there should be another little pin sticking out here you can see it's broken off I did actually find it inside the machine so I do have it but um, gluing it on is probably not going to work I might be able to drill and put a pin down through the centre and uh, repair it that way but this is repairable um, this is repairable but uh, is probably going to show as a, a crack but the um, rest of the case is in fairly good condition so it might be worth looking at uh, repairing this the chassis is in good condition, just needs to clean and um, no bend, it's not distorted so that uh, is recoverable, no problems with that the cassette drive seems fine it um, needs a new belt on it, needs a head cleaning it's had a fair amount of use so uh, needs lubricating, the uh, keys are all sticking the drive doesn't always engage properly so it needs the uh, contact cleaning desperately in need of a clean as you can see um, but other than that um, mechanically seems to be fairly sound so again that's quite good the monitor assembly is in good condition it's extremely clean so I think somebody's been in here and cleaned all this um, they're not normally as, uh, as clean as this these attract a lot of dust um, but as you can see it's in fairly good uh, cosmetic condition as I said I have removed the uh, front cover there is a screen that normally sits in front of this I've taken that off the inside of it does need cleaning as does the tube but other than that it's all uh, intact so that's good there's a few of the covers and bits and pieces that uh, you take off when dismantling the unit speaker unclips from the chassis keyboard comes out sits on these uh, hinges so when it's in the machine you can hinge it forward and gain access to the board underneath but um, yeah, it looks nice and clean the keys did seem to operate nice and smoothly they're all the same height none are missing none are damaged so again that's good the main board needs a clean and uh, yeah, the corrosion or the oxidation on the memory chip uh, pins is a bit worse than I thought but um, 
They should be cleanable, if not uh, I can always replace them. They're four 116s, so a uh, fairly common uh, device. Um, this is of course a, a Z80 based machine, hence the name. And you can see it's a fairly simple machine, quite nicely laid out, good quality board. Doesn't appear to have any modifications made to it that I can see. Expansion slot on the back and one internally. Monitor connects to this rear connector and the uh, tape drive to the front. So that looks fine. I'll of course test it more thoroughly uh, once it's been put back together. And then on to the main, well I think is the main culprit and this was, I'm sure it was um, sold as uh, faulty and I think the seller said he switched it on and it worked fine but then the supply failed so I've got a feeling this uh, belched out a lot of smoke possibly blew the fuse and uh, we can all see why so this is again very common I've been over this in previous videos so uh, the caps uh, had failed and um, blown themselves to pieces so they'll need to be replaced so I can get those replaced other than that the rest of it is just a case of cleaning it and then we'll see if we can get it working repair the case and um, see if we can uh, actually run the programs that came with it if not we'll find some others and run those this is the bit of the case that broke off and uh, you can see it's very small and flimsy so I may well replace that um, with a metal version rather than just gluing that back on. Okay, so that's it for this video. Uh, fairly uh, short and um, not particularly exciting, but maybe anyone that uh, likes these machines uh, was curious as to what's inside them.